Hi, I'm Rui Israel, Director of Education at Sammy's Camera. I sat down with Anthony Friedkin just as his gallery show is about to open at Sammy's Leica Boutique in our flagship store in Los Angeles. A native of Los Angeles, Anthony Friedkin has been documenting the social landscape with his in-depth photo essays for over 45 years. His full-frame black and white photographs explore the many layers of reality. Join me to learn more about this living photographic legend, Anthony Friedkin. I got my first camera uh, when I was eight years old, actually. My mother's best friend gave me a Kodak Brownie. I'm one of those photographers that got a Kodak Brownie. And I immediately was just totally consumed with it. I started photographing everything around me, my brother, his friends, playing Knights of the Round Table, my cat actually giving birth on the end of my bed. And uh, right away, I knew, like, even then, that this was, like, something that was so much part of who and what I'm about, even though I was a child. I just loved taking pictures. My father was a, a, a filmmaker. He was a writer and a director. And my mother was a dancer at Paramount Studios when she was younger. So I came from kind of an inner, you know, a film background in a sense. And um, both my folks were completely supportive of my work as a photographer from a very early age. I knew that there was nothing more I wanted to do or to be. I shot film all the time because I had the luxury of being able to process it myself. There's a thrill about film that is undeniable. It's in your hands. You can look at the negative, you can see it. It's exciting every time, like, did you get it? Or you hope you got it, you know? You know, I'm someone who's really studied the history of photography, going to its origins, which are back in the early 1800s. And for me, the strength of the art form of photography is in its purity. The black and white still, the sense of the time and the place, is the purest way you can express yourself in a photograph. Going back to even the 1800s in France, there was a wonderful photographer named Eugene Auger, who did some fantastic work in Paris. André Cortez was one, a very young, great photographer, 35 millimeter. Of course, Cartier-Bresson is like our father of the decisive moment. He's revered by almost everyone who does kind of what we call black and white street photography. Uh, Danny Lyon is somebody who I admire very much all of the series he's done. There's a magnificent Czechoslovakian photographer named Josef Koldelka, whose work is off the charts brilliant, absolutely extraordinary. So Koldelka, for me at the moment, I would say is, uh, probably gives me more inspiration in terms of looking at his work than any other photographer. This image here behind me is certainly one of the ones I'm most proud of. The story behind this is I'm a Californian. I grew up in California. I started surfing when I was a young kid also. My surfing and my photography actually kind of parallel one another. So I wanted to do a story about surfers, what happens when they get out of the ocean. Like, how do they live? How do they dress? What are they like with their girlfriends? How do they party? You know, I, I wanted to do a serious essay on, on my life as a surfer and my friends' lives. You know, when I teach photography, I talk about a photograph is not a drawing. It's not a collage. It's not a painting. It's not an illustration. It, you know, it's a photograph, and it inherently has very different qualities, and it appeals to us psychologically very different than other visual art. I let the picture take me. I don't take it. It takes me. So. If I, I always have a camera with me. I'm very superstitious, actually. I don't like to ever leave my house without a camera. I mean, people that know me think it's a little weird at times, because even at night we go out or whatever on a double date or something. Like, I have my camera with me, because I always say, like, well, what if the spaceship lands in front of me and the little pink people come out and I don't have my camera? Like, how am I ever going to explain that to my friends? Like, you wouldn't believe that the flying saucer landed right in front of me and they got out and I didn't even have my camera with me. So I'm always inspired to think about what might be coming up, like what could the next day offer me as a photographer or an image. Um, you never know. Some of the best photographs I've ever made in my life just happened out of nowhere. And thank God I have my camera, because if I didn't have it, I wouldn't have gotten them. You know, I'm embarrassed to tell you the truth about this. I have over 100 cameras that I own, and every single one of them, including this, this is my most favorite. This is my 
black M4, which I've had for, are you ready for this? I've had this almost 50 years, this camera, and it works perfectly. This is like a Stradivarius violin, this camera. I mean, seriously, I think this, there's nothing that compares to the engineering and the optics of Leica cameras, nothing. Everybody compares their equipment to Leica, and it's been that way for a very long time. The Leica, again, I keep talking about it as a Stradivarius, but it, it, it's such a magnificent instrument to use as a photographer. You know, it, it's different than other cameras. It has a different kind of engineering to it, um, the sound of it, the way you look through the viewfinder in an M series, which is the analog film series. It, it's a unique camera, and the, and the quality that you get, I mean, when you look at the quality of this picture behind me, you don't get that kind of quality with every camera. Leica, I must say, has kept the tradition of excellence in all of their equipment with the sensors that they're designing for their digital cameras. The optics are still superior to anybody else. They've maintained their reputation, which isn't easy because they've been on top for a long time, but they still, you know, everyone reveres what they do, and I'm proud to be part of that history. To me, cameras are like instruments. They're visual instruments, and they need to be played. Just the way a musical instrument gets played, a really good photographer, in my opinion, they play the camera and they practice. I mean, I've been doing this since I was, you know, eight years old. You know, I must say, Sammy has a genuine love of photography. He really loves the art of photography and the medium of photography, and he respects photographers, and he understands the needs that photographers have to survive, to make a living as a photographer, creatively to make important statements as a photographer, and throughout my whole relationship with Sammy's, I've always appreciated that very, very much. Even the salespeople here, they understand that. And it means something. So my affection for the company and for him personally and everything that he's done for not only me but other photographers, I'm extremely appreciative of that. I personally think this store here in Hollywood, and I've traveled a lot over my lifetime in many countries, my opinion, this is the nicest, finest camera store in the world. I mean it. I really feel that way. It's the most beautiful store. It has the most incredible inventory and layout and so on. But in terms of when you needed something, Sammy had it. If, if it was last minute and it was all, all hell was breaking loose, Sammy understood and you could run in, grab what you needed and run out and Sammy would take care of it later. Um, the support from all the employees to everybody, you know, so we're in the Leica Boutique at the store in Hollywood on Fairfax. We're on the third floor at the Leica Boutique. This is actually a very special place because there's not that many stores in the world that carry the kind of inventory on Leica equipment that Sammy has here, for one, and have salespeople that are as knowledgeable as Rika. I'm going to be exhibiting some of my classic Leica photographs that I've made throughout my entire career. The prints that are in the exhibition were actually made here at Sammy's, here in the Fairfax store in the Digital Bureau, and Roger, who's head of that department, had made all these prints for us, and they're magnificent prints. Roger here at Sammy's in the Digital Bureau is one of the finest digital artists I have ever worked with in my entire life. From point A to Z in terms of the whole digital process of scanning, printing, different papers, different tonalities, everything, Roger's a master at that, and I'm, I'm really proud. I mean, look at this print. It's a beautiful, absolutely beautiful print through centuries of time, all civilizations are judged by their artwork in retrospect, you know. And maybe, you know, this photograph 200 years from now will still have the ability to touch someone when they look at it. So I, I, the inspiration comes from being an artist, living the life that goes with that, and, and hopefully dedicating myself to the, you know, medium of photography.